It's your brother Alfonso X. Live in full effect. Here to drop some bombs. You know, just just like the sun. You know, we shine light on everybody equally. You know, so uh, what I'm about to be touching on is graduate knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You know what I mean? This ain't for the babies. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no teaching that you can go and take to the brothers and sisters on the street and expect them to understand where you coming from. You know, and usually when you are touching on these type of teachings that I want to go into today, usually sometimes people are criticized and say, you know, brother, way you way out there in space. And sometimes that causes people to hold back. This has been information that I've been holding back, but the more research that I do, I am more compelled to share with the world, share with the brothers and sisters, share with the believers. Some of this information is already well known and understood. You know, so this information I intend to give to the world from not only an it not only a Islamic perspective, but more specifically a nation of Islam perspective. You know, why do I say that? Because you know, we believe that the black man is God. So really we giving this understanding although this, all, most of this information is is ancient, is black, but you know. You have other people who take who took our ancient knowledge and and stepped on it. You know what I'm saying? They they didn't made it white. You know what I'm saying? They didn't took the teachers and took our understanding and just gave and is giving the world their version of it. But I but I intend to give this understanding in its uh, purest form. You know when we. Uh, talk about the ancient teachings and the serious connection, you know. And so, you know, uh, basically, you know, I, I, since I was young, you know, I love watching history, love watching the History Channel, you know, so I would hear uh, certain things. I would hear certain things, but, you know, these they just see, you know what I'm saying, you know, um, I never really thought too hard on certain things that I would hear, you know. But as I'm an adult now, you know, and I'm hearing certain things again and from different perspectives, and I'm able to tie or connect the dots, you know. And one thing that uh, our sister, may Allah be pleased with her mother, Tanetta Muhammad, she always, she always talked about crystals, you know, crystals, colors, and music, you know, but so a few months back, I started handling crystals and, you know, just one night, you know, I just had a moment of clarity, but I was Laying down, my eyes closed, like half sleep, half awoke. I don't know how many of you all ever experienced that before, but, you know, I was sleep with my crystal on my chest, around, my, you know, around my neck on my chest. And for some reason, you know, I just had a moment of clarity as far as a lot of the stuff that I had been learning since I was a young teenager, things that I would hear on the history channel or hear from other people, various people start to come together. And I think that's how this um this the serious connection in Superman and Master Muhammad comes in, you know, like 
I was blessed to be able to receive this information and understand it, not necessarily be taught this information personally, but be able to put it all together. You know, it was a seed that was dropped and then somebody, God or somebody watered it, watered the seed and it just grew inside my mind. You know, so let me share this with you. <clears throat> now, in the Holy Quran, Chapter 53, Al Najm, the star. Chapter 53, Al Najm, the star. There is a very mysterious ayah in that surah. The star. Two, two ayahs that are mysterious. <clears throat> And as I do my research, on, and I, you know, I even looked on YouTube, there are videos that's already talking about this. You know what I'm saying? Because there are many scientific and mathematical miracles that are in the Quran that was uh, divinely inspired by uh, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, to to give to the world that modern day science is just now catching up to bearing witness of, of uh, the, the scientific and mathematical miracles that are in the Quran proving that this is a divinely inspired book by Allah. So I'm going to read a couple verses or ayats out of the Quran, and then I'm going to also elaborate further on the discussion. So as I read chapter 53, al Najm, the star, ayat 49, it says, and that he, Allah, is the Lord of Sirius. I'm going to repeat. It says, and that he, Allah, is the Lord of Sirius. So when I first read that in the past, I'm wondering, like, why is the Quran saying specifically by name of a star system that Allah is the Lord of. I couldn't quite wrap my mind around that. That it says Allah is the Lord, or he is the Lord of Sirius. Right? So when you go to Ayat 9, same chapter, right? This is what I this is one of the things that I've learned. In uh, Al Najm, the star, chapter 53, verse of Ayat 9, it says, So he was the measure of two bowls or closer still, or so he was the measure of two bowl lengths or closer still. God refers to Sirius, known as Shira in Arabic, in verse 49 of Surat An Najim of the Quran. It is he who is the Lord of Sirius. The Sirius double stars orbit in ellipses around one another. The orbital period of Sirius A and B about their common center of gravity is 49.9 years. This scientific data is today accepted with one accord by the Departments of Astronomy at Harvard, Ottawa, and Leicester Universities. This information is reported as followed in various sources. Sirius, the brightest star, is actually a twin star. Its orbit lasts 49.9 years. 
As is known, the star Sirius A and Sirius B orbit each other in a double bow every 49.9 years. The point requiring attention here is the double, bow-shaped orbit of the two stars around one another. We've seen that the star Sirius is referred to in Surat al-Najim, verse 49. We also encounter a very wise analogy in verse 9 of the same surah. He was two bow lengths away or even closer. As we have seen this far, the star Sirius is referred to in verse 49 of the surah. And verse 9 of the same surah contains the expression, two bow lengths, to refer to the two stars' orbits. When we combine the numbers of these two verses, in other words, 49 and 9, we obtain the number 49.9, the duration in years of these stars' orbits. Here we are faced with a mathematical miracle of the Quran. Given the technological means available 1400 years ago, it was of course impossible for people living then to know that the star Sirius, one of which is too small to be seen with the naked eye, was actually a two-star system, that both these stars' orbits were in the form of a bow, and that those orbits lasted for 49.9 years. So, 49, 49 and 9. So scientists went among a people around 1930 by the name of the Dogon tribe in West Mali, an uh, ancient people who left Egypt, right? So a lot, some of they share a lot of the same knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, proving that they originally came from Egypt. So when these white scientists or astronomers went among the uh, doggone tribe, the mop in West Africa, you know, that the doggone tribe told them that there was a people who came from the stars and gave them all of their wisdom and understanding of the stars and how they work in the, in the, in the star systems. So, the doggone tribe told those scientists, those white scientists, that not okay, not only that there is a serious A, there's a star, the brightest star in the sky called Sirius A, but not only that they was able to point that out to them, they also told them that there are two other stars that are in that star system. See, not, but they are but they are invisible to the naked eye, and that is Sirius B, which is a white dwarf star, and Sirius C was a star that all the atoms collapsed on there. And can nobody visit or inhabit that? that specific star, and I will go in further into that later on in the conversation, inshallah. Our standard, when you see our standard in the background, the flag, you know, you have this, why did Master Farah Muhammad give us this standard, and then why is it in this first quarter? Why is this moon in the first quarter and why did he give us the standard? Because the red on our flag represents the sun, our sun. Then you got the crescent moon and then you have the star. It's, and it's not many stars, it's not multiple stars because when you look in the Quran there's a chapter called in some Qurans is either the mansion of the, the mansion of stars or the constellation of stars or the house of stars. 
And then you got a chapter that's just called The Star. So when you look at our standard, you got the sun, the moon, and the star. Now, could that star be representing the serious star? So here's a letter from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to Johnny X. Boy in 1969. He says, Allah taught me that he will bring the moon back to its rightful place, and for that, and, and that for a moon, he will use a particular star. We will have no need for that old type of moon, for the star will have power to contain and hold our waters, as well as another planet. He says that there will even be a new form, a new life from our waters. He said there will even be a form of new life from our waters. This will be the life of a new covering of the earth. As you already know, the devil has destroyed the beautiful covering that she once had. So what star is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talking about? We already talked about the structuring, the restructuring of DNA as a new life form. But what star is the message you're talking about? And you know I've gone into this in past presentations. He's talking about the Sirius star system. Sirius A, known by the Dogon tribe as Sigitolo. Sirius B, known as Potolo. And Sirius C, known as Emyatolo by our ancestors in the Dogon tribe. A star that shines 26 times brighter than our home star in our current solar system. So the scientists basically discovered a dual star system that is uh, 8.6 light years away, I believe. 8.6 light years away. So according to scientists that that in space travel eight point light eight point six light years is not that far of a distance. Now when we dealing with the ancient teachings of of ancient people, you know there there is a there there is a prophecy by the Dogon. <clears throat> the name of this prophecy is called the burning of a pale fox. So as we are taught in the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad that the, the white man, the grafted devil here on our earth has a time limit on our planet of 6,000 years. And, and Jesus said that he's not going to, well, God said that he's not going to destroy the uh planet with water anymore, he's going to destroy it with fire. You know what I'm saying? Jesus said, that, you know, he's going to make it rain down fire. You know what I mean? In the Bible. You know, and in the Quran it talks about, you know, both Bible and the Quran talks about, you know, the wicked will be burned in something like an oven. They will be burning. You know what I'm saying? Or a dome of fire. Just as we are taught. You know, that Allah is going to create a dome around America and set it on fire and kill all the wicked. The Dogon predicted the burning of the pale fox, which I've uh, done in a different lecture. Mm -hmm. So check that, that lecture out. Um, Sirius, the Golden Age, and the rise of the black gods are going to the Dogon tribe. They predicted the burning of the pale fox. So who was the pale fox they were referring to? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's prediction of the burning of America now makes sense when you understand that the Earth's magnetic field is weakening over the Western Hemisphere most and allowing cosmic and solar radiation at a high and alarming rate to Europeans into the atmosphere. And they're receiving more uh, uh, sunburned skin cells, melanoma, cancer, so on and so forth. So when you talk about the fall of America and the burning of America, there's scientific evidence that adds up to that as we speak. So the doggone has a teaching called the burning of the pale fox. <clears throat> and they believe because we are in a orbit with the serious sun 
every six, 50 to 60,000 years, you know what I'm saying, with the Sirius star system, right? So every 25,000 years, according to the ancients, this is in multiple ancient teachings with the, with the Mayas, you know, with the, with the uh, Indians and the Yugas, with the Egyptians, you know, um, with the doggone, with the Muslims, you know what I'm saying? Because we teach that every uh, the uh, <clears throat> every fifty thousand years is a universal change, according to Master Muhammad. He said that every fifty thousand years is a universal change, right? So, so the basically the closer we get to the serious star system, the more enlightenment there is. We are going back to a golden age. Um, solar system and how it works. Um, for instance, the moon goes around the earth. The earth in turn is rotating and orbiting the sun. So it takes 365 days to go around the sun. Now our sun in turn is orbiting Sirius. Sirius being the brightest star in the sky and in the sector of Cancer, right near Gemini. Okay. And in the sector of Cancer. But there is a secret meaning here, which very few people understand. Cancer, right here in the center, plays a key significant role. Since the champion of today did some incredible calculations showing, because he was a mathematician, showing that there's different angles, everything is leading to cancer, to everyone to look at cancer here. Orbiting Sirius. Sirius being the brightest star in the sky and in the sector of Cancer, right near Gemini, it is in a binary with our star. And every 24,000 years, we go around each other in a clockwise motion. Sirius and our sun have been going away from each other for the last couple of thousand years, and now they've turned the corner. So they're heading towards one another. As we reach the outer limits of that orbit, that elliptical orbit with our sun and Sirius, um, this is where the Iron Age is, the Golden Age is when they are close to each other, and then as they separate, they go through the silver and the bronze to the Iron Age. Well, that affects the consciousness of mankind because we have 100% consciousness when the two stars are close to each other. The consciousness falls to 75%, 50% and 25%. We've not enjoyed full consciousness for a long time and many of the gifts and abilities and powers that we once had. As we have turned the corner in the great orbit of our two suns, Sirius and our sun, as we have turned the corner and they are hurtling towards each other now, we have turned the corner from the dark ages. We've come out of the dark period because the, the suns have been, have been pulled apart and their influence is weakened and therefore our consciousness has dropped and we're in the dark ages. Now they're pulling towards each other, bringing us to a higher consciousness. And that is, that's nature. <laughs> nature brings us, um, brings us, ascends, helps us and carries us through the ascension process. So it's all loving. Even though there's chaos and there's um, fear and um, anguish and, and chaotic events occurring around us in our world, even though that is happening, that's really just the remnants of the dark ages. So we've turned the corner. The two suns are hurtling towards each other at great speeds now. You know what I'm saying? That's what the guys, are, uh, the Sphinx and the... Uh, the the Great Pyramids of Gaza, Gaza, you know what I'm saying? That is basically a clock around the Sphinx in the in the um, in the Great Pyramids of Gaza is basically a clock letting us know how close we are to the Sirius star system. And then redraw all the lines. When we draw a line from this corner to the bottom of the Sphinx, it goes straight to the middle of the lowest, bigger pyramid. By doing so, we divide the full circle into one third and the other one is two thirds. So that means that this is a side of a perfect triangle. Here we see it. And the other perfect triangle starts in the top pyramid 
in the northeast corner of the biggest pyramid, of the Great Pyramid. So this is a very ancient symbol. It's a symbol, the Seal of Salomo. It's very beautiful that it's present on the Kise Plateau. And why is that? Because it's a clock, and the clock goes this way, it goes counterclockwise. And the full circle is nearly 26,000 years. This is the moment Leo started, then it became dark. And this is the moment where Aquarius will start, then it will be light. So this is the dark period, half a circle, and then a half a circle, a light period. What did they do to help us remind us about this, to help us interpret this, this clock? They built the Sphinx, the Great Sphinx. What does it mean? This is the body of Leo, of a lion, with the head of Aquarius. That is what, is this, what we see here. It's, it's very obvious, but we didn't see it for thousands. So basically every 25,000 years, like when we get closer to the Sirius star system, you know, every 25,000 years, there's a golden age and then then we start to go away, we start to orbit away from the Sirius star system another 25,000 years. You know what I'm saying? But when we come back another 25,000 years, there's another age of enlightenment. But the, but the doggone tribe believe that the closer the Sirius get, it's going gonna, it's gonna to burn up all non-melanated people. You know what I'm saying? Because they're already having a tough time with just one son. So imagine if, if there were two sons, you know what I'm saying? And we are carbonated beings, you know, but we are carbon-12 beings. We are in our most dense form. So that's why, in my opinion, that Master Farah Muhammad came with how to eat to live because he said that the Navy being fights off the, the deadly harms or the deadly rays of radiation. So we have to shed this carbon-12 form into a carbon-7 form, being a crystalline-type being, because we are carbon beings. Just like the Christians say, we have to be crystallized in the body of Christ. So what do you do, what do, you do with a piece of coal or a carbon, uh, something made of carbon? When you add heat and pressure, it, become, it, it, it sheds off all the dross and impurities, and it become crystallized. So as a melanated or carbon, or more correctly, a carbonated people, the more pressure and the more uh, draws that we shed off, the more heat that we are applied, not only physically, but spiritually, we become crystallized in the body of Christ. So the planet is heating up, it's warming up, and they know about it. Not only do the, the modern scientists know about it, but those who are initiated in the secret societies of the Masonic orders and Illuminati's and orders of the quest and so on and so forth, they understand why. Because our teachers, our ancient scientists gave them this information and they knew that an end would be coming. So here's where it gets interesting. As we move from carbon 12 on the planet Earth to carbon 7, carbon 12 which consists of six electrons, six protons, and six neutrons, 666. That's the rule of the devil. And the reason why it's the rule of the devil, because as long as we were operating on carbon-12 level, that's when we were able to be infiltrated by nitrogen, infiltrated by European thought. This is when we became weaker from our previous supreme state. So carbon-12, or 666, six electrons, six protons, six neutrons, is the rule of the devil, but we're about to move into carbon-7, which is the rule of God. Now, carbon-7 consists of six protons, six electrons, and one neutron. So we're going to be releasing five neutrons. And when you add up the six electrons, six protons, and one neutron, what you have is 13. And Europeans always had a fear of the number 13. But it's considered carbon-7 because it adds the amount of protons and neutrons. And this is what we're moving into. 
from carbon-12 on this planet to carbon-7. And that goes for the entire planet as well as the carbon-melanin-based dominant individuals. And that's why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan told us that we are not chosen because of our righteousness. We are chosen because we went through the furnace of affliction. That's why we are chosen. So we have been put into a furnace for the last past 6,000 years under the rule of Satan. But now Satan's time is up. There will be a universal change in the red star and the blue star that Master Farah Muhammad pointed out to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in my opinion, was Series A and Series B. Those stars that he pointed out to them was that universal change that was prophesied to take place, not just among our people, though, not just among the Egyptians or the doggone tribe, but also the Indians. With the Yuga, the, you know what I'm saying? The Kali Yuga and the Sati Yuga. Because I'm going to get into the coming of Mass from Muhammad in another video. But also with the Hopi Indians and the Mayan, more specifically the Hopi, when they talk about the Red Star Kachina and the Blue Star Kachina, and then when, the, when you see these signs, then you will know that God in person will come, the Pahana, or the true white brother. Pahana means the one who came across the water. And in our teachings, we say that Master Muhammad traveled 9,000 miles to get here to save us. But I'll get into that later. But I'm just sharing a little bit, you know, that, that this is an ancient understanding that we have yet to understand, you know, and our brother, uh, Dr. Malachi Z. York, when he referred to the Sirius star system, he called it, he called it the 19th galaxy, Ilion. He called it the 19th galaxy, right? That number 19. Mother Tynetta, she wrote a book called The Comer by Night. And she quotes the work of a, a Muslim, a Muslim brother. I think his, his name is Rashad something. I can't think of the brother's name right now. But how he discovered the mathematical code of the number 19. The number 19. And like I said, brother Dr. Malachi Z. York called Sirius the 19th galaxy. This brother, uh, Mother Tarnetta, talks about the mathematical code of the number 19 in her book, in the Quran. And she said that all Allah's chosen people have the number nine, nine she said the number 19 is Allah's signature. She said uh, Allah's chosen people have the number 19, maybe not physically, but symbolically written in the forehead of his chosen people. The number 19. No, and, and not coincidentally, she named the sisters garment. She named the garment of the NGT uh, standard uniform the number 19. She called it the number 19 uniform. Minister Farrakhan, I once heard Minister Farrakhan say in a lecture that the mystery of God is in the womb of the woman. <clears throat> I'm going to repeat that. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, the mystery of God is in the womb of the woman. Okay? So, when we talk about 
I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to that, right? I'm gonna get to that train of thought in a second. But Mother Tynetta not only had just one, not only she had one article, but she had three to four articles touching on the serious star system. Now, I had read one of one of our brothers, shout out to Brother Zaki Muhammad, that he posted on Facebook because I had already been studying it. But I don't think it's a coincidence that he just happened to just post something about because he liked to post her articles. And he posted something. And it instantly caught my attention because I had already been studying it. But I didn't know that Mother Tynetta was already up on this information. I thought that, you know, I'm the only one. But no, she was, Mother Tynetta was ahead of her time. So I read one article. It was like, whoa, she knows what she's talking about. Today, I typed in Google, looked up, looked at, I was looking for that specific article again, but I found uh, maybe like two, three more articles in the Final Call newspaper where Mother Tynetta is talking again about the Sirius star system. So just to read some of her uh, article for you all, her article is called Unveiling the Number 19. Now l- listen to the title of Mother Tynetta's article in the Final Call newspaper. It's called Unveiling the number 19. So I'm going to I'm gonna go back into what Minister Farrakhan said in a minute about the mystery of God is in the womb of a woman. But let me read some of my sister's article right here. And mind you that I did not read these articles prior to my studies. I was, I was up on something and Mother Tynetta basically verified some of the information that I, that I was coming across. So I don't want people to think that, you know, I'm teaching something other than this man's teachings right here. You know what I'm saying? I don't want people thinking that that I'm going ahead of the minister. I don't want people thinking that I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out in space. I'm with the spook teachers. No. I'm doing our teachings of ju- a, a, a justice, you know, by sharing this information that Mother Tynetta was trying to share with us, but, you know, we just didn't quite get it. You know what I mean? We didn't just quite necessarily understand the magnitude of what our sister was saying, but it was so tied up into our teachings that we just it's right over our head. It, it, it just flew right over our head. But let me read some of her article where it says unveiling the number 19. It says she reads the Quran verse to start it out. Praise be to Allah, who is whatsoever is in the heavens and whatsoever is in the earth. And to him be praised in the hereafter. And he is the wise, the aware He knows that which goes down into the earth and that which comes out of it and that which comes down from heaven and that which goes up to it. And he is the merciful, the forgiving. So the Quran is basically describing that Allah knows who goes from heaven to earth and from earth into heaven. You know what I'm saying? So as I read an article, Sister States, in their article, in the number 19, while traveling with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as part of a 24-member delegation <clears throat> on his World Friendship Tour number three in 1997 through 1998, our first stop after disembarking in Europe was the country of Mali in Central Africa. The Honorable Minister Farrakhan and his delegation were hosted by then President Alfred Omar Kanadi. Canary in the capital of Bumako, 
Mali is the home to the more than 1,000 year university of Timbuktu and is also home to the mysterious doggone tribe who disclosed in the last century in 1931 evidence of their sacred ceremonies and teachings originating with visitors from the dog star system of Sirius. In this remote desert-like environment, they have handed down from generation to generation their genealogical link to this distant star, which is also related to the beliefs and teachings of ancient Egypt, millennium of years, oh, I'm sorry, ancient Egypt, millennium of years prior to the age of modern astronomy and modern telescope and observatories. They tell about the visit of their ancestral gods and scientists and teachers named Nomos. Nomos are the people that came from the stars. But basically what she was saying was that, that there's a people that came down and gave them information. And, and people believe that they are speaking the truth because the Dogon tribe didn't have any modern technology, didn't have no telescopes or anything to even know that those serious B and serious C were even up there. You know what I'm saying? Blow, ba blowing and baffling the minds of uh, modern day scientists. So she continues. They identify them as traveling in the fiery spaceship and the appearance of a new star called the 10th moon, which has only been recently identified by astronomers as a 10th moon orbiting the planet Saturn. I heard, I heard uh, white people say the same thing. <clears throat> they were also taught about the giant planet Jupiter and other closer planets in our solar system. They were instructed by the they were instructed about the inv invisible stars B and C, which rotate around Sirius A, <clears throat> which were also only recently discovered by astronomers in 1977 and 1995, recent discoveries. Again, they also relay through oral traditions and drawings that their teachings were brought to them by beings from that star system who arrived in fiery airborne ships, which anchored on our planet and are described as the teachings, as the teachers of the ancient scientists of our universe. This ancient wisdom also includes the knowledge of the retrograde orbit of our 10th moon circling the planet Saturn named Phoebe, the rings of Jupiter and its connection to the earth. They were informed about the orbit of the planet Venus and Mars. They were initiated into the ancient cosmology of the stars pertaining to the mechanics of our universe. Nothing in this tradition presents a spook or a mystery god of origin. Nothing in this tradition presents a spook or a mystery god of origin. Now watch this. The dog star Sirius as we have studied our signs, all other known stars in the canopy of stars located in the Canis Major constellation or big, big dog. Since ancient times, the Sirius star system is also related to the Egyptian mysteries taught by the divine couple or pair Isis and Osiris. Now I'm gonna go back to Isis and Osiris in a minute, when I when I go back to what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan stated about the mystery of God being in the womb of the woman, I'm going to go back to that in a second. But let me finish reading this, and then I'll go back to that. Is, okay, I'm going to repeat. Since ancient times, the Sirius star system is also related to the Egyptian mystery taught by the divine couple or pair Isis and Osiris. They are noted in ancient Egyptian lore as the sacred marriage that connects the constellations of Sirius and Orion with Sirius B, representing the goddess sister ne Nephetis. It appears that the doggone people and their associated tribes in Mali departed from ancient Egypt, as we have been taught with their father Shabazz, 
50,000 years ago and retain some of the ancient wisdom of their forefathers. So she even included our teachings uh, in comparison to what the doggone tribe teach. Now listen, Arthur Robert Temple in his book, he's one of the first people that ever uh, wrote a book on a uh, series. Arthur Robert, I mean, Arthur Robert Temple in his book, The Serious Mystery, writes in the first chapter and opening paragraph the following words. How could the ancient and secret traditions of an African tribe contain highly precise astrophysical information about invisible stars in the Sirius star system? Some of it has only been discovered very recently by modern scientists. Half a century after it was recorded by anthropologists studying the Bible. In 1995, the French astronomers Daniel Bennis and J.L. Dudin published the result of years of study in the journal, Astronomy and Astrophysics, stating that a small red dwarf star, Sirius C, seems to exist in the system of the star Sirius. They have detected a perturbation which cannot be explained by any other means. In another part of his book on page 32, he explains the appearance of this phenomenal scientific information disclosed by the doggone tribe. Quote, is there any clue in the traditions as to where any sleeping nomos might be? There is in the doggone tradition for the doggone differentiates very clearly between the fiery roaring landing craft which they describe as bringing the nomos to earth and the new star which appeared in the sky while they were here which would seem to be a reference to their larger base parked in orbit this is called the star of the 10th moon the doggone do three drawings of it showing it in separate stages which seem to imply that it can that it can be expanded or contracted as a spear at will just like uh the bible in the book of ezekiel when they're talking about the spears or the wheels within wheels and when you look at some of these uh ufo videos that are being posted on uh various social media websites, you can see how some of these spheres or some of these wheels can then be one and then multiple ones come out of that one. That, you know what I'm saying? You know, and then they'll go back into that one, you know, wheels within wheels. As remarkable as the above information may be, we have to compare this knowledge to the, to the coming of the great Monty to America in 1930. Listen, listen, listen what the sister's saying. My, this is Mother Tynetta's words. She's accredited to Master for our Muhammad. She said, as remarkable as the above information may be, we have to compare this knowledge to the coming of the great Monty to America in 1930 named W. Fard Muhammad who also taught us through the divine teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad about civilizations on other planets and pointed out the discovery of the planet Pluto, also newly discovered in 1930 at the time of his first public appearance, which I have a little information concerning the planet Pluto that I don't want to disclose right now. I just want to do a little bit more research on 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 this uh, appearance being made by Master Muhammad and him uh, uh, revealing uh, planet Pluto because planet Pluto was not known to modern scientists until the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told the white people that it was there. But well, let me get back to the reading. He also pointed out the appearance of two stars in the southeast corner of the heavens, a blue star and a red star, as a sign of universal change in the civilization on our planet. He also pointed out the presence of the great mother's wheel 
and the advanced civilization on board this man-made planet. He also taught that we were coming to the knowledge of a new educational system. And we teach that Minister Farrakhan is supposed to leave and come back with, with a new knowledge that will last for 10,000 years. It said, he, she said, he also taught that he would come into the knowledge of, we will come into the knowledge of a new educational system that would teach us advanced mathematics and astronomy and the mechanics of the universe showing us how our ancient people built great monuments on earth aligned to the stars. I end with this question. Are we being revisited at this time at the end of the present world order of Satan by beings who are under the command of the great Mahdi and his Christ, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who are trying to get in touch with us telepathically assigned as the great angelic host now descending from every part of our earth and universe. Is this phenomenon one unit creation as the new heaven and the new earth being revealed to the righteous, the extension of which teaches the Holy Quran is as wide as the heavens and earth. And then she finishes with a Quran verse that says, and those who disbelieve say, the hour will never come to us, say, yeah, but my Lord, the knower of the unseen, it will certainly come to you. Not an atom's weight escapes him in the heavens or in the earth, nor is there less than, than that nor greater. But all is in the clear book that he may reward those who believe and do good. For them is forgiveness and an honorable su uh, sustenance. So Mother Tanetta not only had one uh, article, but she has several. She has another article called the Dog Star Series. Contacts in Mexico, preparation for the final war. And she has another one called Contacts from the Dog Star Series, the Fulfillment of Ancient Prophecy. So this is something that uh, Mother Tynetta had been privy to, and she has been sharing with us. And that's why I feel like it's my duty as a brother to remind us of uh, some of the things that she was teaching us, you know what I mean? And it just, I can't say it just came to me, but you know, there's certain information that I was being taught. There was certain information that I was hearing. And once I start, once I start handling crystals, you know what I'm saying? I, understandings start to come, you know, I don't know why, but back to what the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan stated, he said that the mystery of God is in the womb of the woman. So there is a brother who um, done a lecture by the name of a born mastermind, Allah. His name is Born Mastermind Allah. You can find a brother on YouTube. He did a lecture on uh, Sinetta TV uh, a YouTube page, right? And he in his in the, the name of the video, the name of the video. It's called Born Mastermind Allah, The Science of Asiatic Carbon 7 and 14. And he has another one called, called um, the Sirius, the Golden Age and the Rise of the Black God. Sirius, the Golden Age and the Rise of the Black God. So basically, my, what, what the brother was saying in this video about Sirius he was saying how the black woman and the black man, he said that our physical anatomy is designed after the physical universe. He said our physical anatomy is designed after the physical universe. So, and he was explaining 
explain them because you got a lot of these hoteps going around saying that the black woman is God, black the black woman is God, but he was saying we got to stop all this simp, wimp, pimp stuff, you know what I'm saying, and really study and understand the whole origin of all of this, right? So, he was basically describing how a black hole is created by a, a, a dying star. But the black hole is basically symbolized as a womb of the black woman. It's symbolized as a womb. Right? That basically gives birth. And the brother in the, in the Born Master Mind Allah in his video, he called it that he called a dual star system twin placentas. He called them twin placentas, right? But he said, but he basically was describing how our star system was inside of a, a mother star system, right? Our star system was inside of a mother star system. And so we, our star system passed through, hold on one second. Our star system, like a child or like a baby, passed through the womb or the black hole of another star system thus giving birth to our star system, right? And there is ancient proof. And, and basically, when you when the Egyptians, as Mother Tainetta Muhammad mentioned, with uh, the, the marriage between Isis, slash Sirius and Osiris slash Orion. The marriage between Isis and Osiris, Sirius and Orion. Sirius was Isis and Orion was Osiris. But when you understand the mythical story of both characters, they give birth to a child named Haru or some say Horus, right? And originally they are depicted as black. You know what I'm saying? They are, uh, uh, Osiris, he was called the Lord. Osiris means the Lord of the black. Isis, she was depicted as black. Haru, he was depicted as black, right? But these characters, these mythical characters symbolize these star systems, Orion, and Sirius. Sirius is Isis. Okay. Now, have now quick question. Have you all ever heard of the Big Bang Theory? Okay. The Big Bang Theory. Okay. Now, the Big Bang Theory basically consists of, they say that the whole universe was compacted into a ball. Then there was a great big explosion. Thus, you have the moniker Big Bang. And then all the atoms and particles spread throughout the cosmos and gave birth to our universe or our solar system, galaxy, or however you know you want to say it. Okay. So... So basically, just as our brother, Dr. Wesley Muhammad, teaches us in the book of God, in uh, defending point number 12, you know, and in, there, in, various, in his various lectures and books, and proving that the black man is God, proving the black God, the brother describes the originator, well, not only the brother, but the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, that we teach God or Allah 
is self-created. He begets, nor is he begotten. He's self-created. So, we teach that Allah was in the Al. Or some scientists may call it the primordial egg. Right? He was in Adam. Some of us say that he came from nothing. It's not that he came from absolutely nothing. There was where, 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 where the originator was was total, complete darkness. And the Quran mentions triple darkness. We call it triple darkness. He was in triple darkness. And this darkness, I think one of the ancient names for it was Noon or Apsu. It was a it was an aqueous black matter, but it was like an atom. It was an egg. It was a ball, and at the center of it was Allah, the God. You know, even in, even in he was in man form, right? And uh, but he was a but inside of that that egg, he was a body of light. As Doctor Wesley said, that the ancients said that. Allah, when he when was in that phase, he went to war with the darkness. <laughs> you know, but I don't want to go off track. But, okay. So go, going back to what I was describing. So to tie all of what Born Mastermind Allah said, what Dr. Wesley Muhammad said, uh, what the Egyptians are saying, to tie, to tie it all in. Oh, yeah, and the doggone. You know, the doggone describe a star, Sirius C. Now, this is just my uh, summation and uh, calculation to all that is being taught. You know, because, because we really got to understand our origin. And, and it's funny that they're high-level Freemasons and Shriners who have an understanding of this information because it's... But before then, in basically secret societies, such as, let's go to ancient Egypt. To the ancient Egyptians, the priests would tell the serfs, the guys that tilled the land, they would say, the sun is God, okay? And, and, and so the, they accepted that very um, low-level interpretation, all physical. That's not what the priests believed. But the priests believed there was a second level. Um, the priests believed that, no, the physical sun is not the supreme being. It's the spirit which flows through the physical sun that is the supreme deity. However, there was another level. And the priests didn't even know it. It's those that were involved and, and, and elevated to to, um, if I would have told you this 15 years ago, I might have gotten shot. But this is now, I'm so glad now that it's as easy to talk about. Um, the, the third level, which was the, which is a better, a higher level of understanding said, nope, it's not, that's not the sun. The sun is not the supreme deity. Nope, yes, spiritual energies come through the sun. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the star Sirius. The dog star, because the dog star was everything to the ancient Egyptians. So that takes us all the way back to what the Quran says in chapter 53. I imagine the star in Ayat 49, he, Allah, is the Lord of Sirius. So, like I said, to sum it all up, and, and what I mean by uh, what Dr. Wesley said, born mastermind Allah, or the doggone and Egyptians are saying, is that when the, when the doggone tribe described Sirius C as a star who collapsed or died, and all the atoms spread out. Because them atoms had to go somewhere. <laughs> all them atoms spread out. And like I said, the dying star creates a black hole. 
Born Mastermind Allah said that our star system came from a mother star system. He said our star system came from a mother star system and, and the black hole acts as a womb or a placenta. The Egyptians described Sirius as a woman, Isis, who was, or Sirius, who was carrying a child. She was pregnant. Which is, in my opinion, serious C. But I guess when the water broke, or the atoms collapsed, or exploded, the atoms pass through the 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 womb or that black hole, giving birth to our star system. I was teaching, and have been teaching that the black woman is the physical embodiment, the physical manifestation of a super massive black hole. And brothers went crazy. Brothers went crazy. Now, modern science teaches us that at the core at the galactic center of every known galaxy, there is a super massive black hole. And that the entire galaxy is orbiting the center of that super massive black hole. Modern science also teaches us that within Psi, every super massive black hole, there is a new universe that is forming or a universe that is forming. Modern science also teaches that this very universe that we live in is inside of a super massive black hole. And they teach that that super massive black hole began to spin well, what's known as a torque, what's known as torf. So when our ancestors, the Dogon tribe referred to Ama, they're speaking of the black man or mind. That's that black cosmic intelligence, that cosmic energy, dark energy. That is the mind of the black man that spins. And that pole, which is that supermassive black hole, is the black woman or womb of man, womb of mind. The supermassive black hole, which universes are born with inside. And they called Ama seed or egg, which is the God particle or the particle that forms universes. So at the galactic center of every known galaxy, there's a supermassive black hole. Superman came from a distant star system. You know what I'm saying? He came from a distant star system as a, as a baby, as a child. Right? out of the House of El. The character Superman was created by two Jews. Because the Jews, the Jews know what's up. They know prophecy. They understand all that stuff. Well, this is Satan. He know. So two Jews created Superman and said he came from a distant star system and he comes out of the House of El. El is a mistransliteration of the, of the word Al, which is the title of God. So, so we know that Master Far Muhammad, his, his father, came out of the house of gods, the 24 scientists. His father, Alfonso, was a scientist, just as Superman's father. When you do your research, Superman's father was a scientist. When you look at both of their uh, physical appearances, they both look like white men with black hair. Now check this out. Now, look at this. Now look at the OG Superman. Look at the OG Superman. Now, black guy that would come looking white. See, he'd come among the people 
know what I'm saying? Looking like a regular human being, you know? Look how, right, how they made Superman. Look, look at the hair with the part in, 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 on the side of his head. But look at the part on the side of his head. He got on glasses on, though. You know, I'm not sure, man, as far as how to wear glasses, but look at the clothing. This is like around, look at how Master for Muhammad dress. This is like around the 1920s to the 1930s. You know what I'm saying? It's like around 1930s, around the time of the Great Depression. You know what I'm saying? Around the time of the Great Depression. So you got art imitating life. You know what I'm saying? You got art imitating life. Right? So, you got uh, Superman. He works for the newspaper. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to, you know, he's, I guess he's a newspaper editor, you know. You know, humble dude. Got an alias called Clark Kent. So, Master for Muhammad. I don't know if he worked for a newspaper, but he has his own newspaper by way of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad through Muhammad Speaks and by way of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan through uh, the Final Call newspaper. So just as Superman worked for a newspaper, as far as Muhammad has his own newspaper. Superman had an alias, Clark Kent. As far as Muhammad had multiple aliases. You can just go and check the record, check the FBI files. Master Farah Muhammad had multiple aliases. And then, also, Superman, when you see his character, his character is very humble. Because he don't want people to know that he's just, he's God. You know what I'm saying? That he's amazing. Master Farah Muhammad as well. A lot of the believers at the time didn't know that Master for Muhammad was God in person. They thought they took him for a prophet, but they didn't know that he was the prophesied one to come. And uh, the only one who recognized him and who he truly was at the time was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Why? Because the honorable Elijah Muhammad was a, was a preacher's child, so he knew the scripture. When you go to Philippians 2 7, it says, your attitude should be the same that Christ Jesus had. That's from Muhammad, the, the coming uh, Christ. Though he was God, he did not demand and claim to his rights as God. He made himself nothing. He took the humble position of a slave and appeared in human form. It said he took the humble position of a slave appeared in a, and appeared in human form. So he came around a time where black people were coming up from slavery. And he was he went to Black Bottom Detroit going door to door selling silks, serving the people. You know what I'm saying? He came, Master Muhammad came among the people as a servant. He did not come. That's why Jesus said, I come to serve. I, didn't, I come not to be served. You know what I'm saying? That's how you know who's the greatest among us. You know what I'm saying? That's how we know that he was God in person because he came humble. And then not, not only he didn't leave, um, not only he didn't come making a big old presentation of who he was, but he left quietly. You know what I'm saying? He was a man of no reputation. Had multiple alien aliases like Superman. You know, a very powerful being, but people didn't even know who he was. When you, when you, um, when you uh, look at Superman's uniform, he had the S on his chest. It was a blue uniform with the S on his chest, blue. You know what I'm saying? And they, they're color blue. It's the blue black God that Dr. Wesley's always talking about or an FOI uniform. <laughs> Same color as the FOI uniform. He's a savior. That's what the FOI is supposed to be. Saviors. Because the Bible said, yeah, I will send you many saviors. Master Muhammad, he it's the Savior. That's why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote the book, Our Savior Has Arrived. 
right? But when you look at the S on his chest, uh, Superman, uh, Lois Lane asked him, you know, what, what does the S on your chest mean? He said it means hope. But when you look at the 19th letter, the 19th, number 19, the 19th letter in the English alphabet is the letter S. The 19th letter is the letter S. And all it can also stand for serious. Remember, I told you, he, Superman, even came from a distant star system. Now, I'm not saying, don't get me twisted, I'm not saying that Master Fra Muhammad came from the Sirius star system. I'm not saying that. But I'm showing that, that there's a connection in this whole story that is filled with signs, symbols, and messages that the uninitiated will not be able to pick up. Those that can see will see, and those that can hear will hear. You know? So, yeah. I mean, if, if uh, anybody have any questions, you know, any thoughts, you know, you want to build, then, you know, I'm always able. You can always hit me up, like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, and we can build because I'm always willing to learn, you know, uh, more. You know what I mean? I'm always willing to add to what I got. You know what I mean? I'm not an arrogant, humble person. I mean, not an arrogant person or air. I'm not an arrogant person. So please excuse me. I'm a little burnt out doing Ramadan to all the believers that are uh, observing Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak. But yeah, you know, so man, do go ahead and do a little bit more research. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, let's build. You know, I hope you all enjoyed this video tonight. I definitely enjoyed uh spending some time with you all and building. So with that, I'd like to greet you all with the reading, the greeting words of peace of Asalamu alaikum.